It's time for another edition of Allie's Book Club, the first of 2021. And of course, it's her book club, so here's Alice Kuypers. Always wonderful to speak with our award-winning author and uh, purveyor of fine uh, books that we should be checking out. So thank you so much for speaking with us again today. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited about the books this month. Well, you're always excited about books, but these these ones are are intriguing uh, in a, on a visual and in a and in an intellectual level. Let's start off with a Giller, a Scotiabank Giller Prize winner, and it is called How to Pronounce Knife. Tell me about this book. So this is the first book of short stories by Suvan Kam Tamanvongsa, and. I cannot convey how much I enjoy the book. The stories are very short, which seems to suit life right now in the pandemic with children home a lot, even though I'm very happy about the school still being open for us. So they're short stories, but they encompass a whole world of the lives of 14 different immigrants. You don't really know where they're from necessarily, although Lao is referenced a lot, not all the time. One of the stories is called Paris, and yet it's set in a chicken factory, and Paris is never referenced or brought back. So there's this feeling all the time of, where are we? Who am I learning about? And just this sense of loss, but yet they're funny and amazing how she manages to bring you near to tears describing something like fish sauce or um, the falling in love with country music of one of the mums in the stories who never really accepts the new reality that she's in. It's just gorgeous. It's so well written. They're so illuminating. I I love the stories. And, and I have to admit, I was I was uh, intrigued by the latter the last story you brought up. The fact that the woman is uh, you know the, the the character in the story is enamored in a big way, obsessed with Randy yeah. Travis. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, like it's, it's really been a while that, since Randy yeah. Travis has been it's a big deal. Session, and then, and then it's also about how she she just wants to live that other life. Mm -hmm. You know, she thinks he's going to show up someday and take her away from the life that she's in, which I don't know that I've ever hoped that about him, but I've certainly had the feeling in my life, oh, is this the right life? Is this the life? Is, should, it, should it be different somehow? So although these people come from very different backgrounds and environments, there's that same feeling of like, who am I in the world? How do I fit in? Where's my place? And a lot of these people are dealing with real challenges and real hardships and still have that universal seeking for belonging. So it's it's beautiful. All right. Well, Randy's too busy. He's too busy digging up bones. <laughs> hey, song <laughs> reference. There you go. That's <laughs> from a very long time ago. Uh, it's, it's such a bad reference. <laughs> Allie, Allie had to turn away. Uh, let's talk about some, we talk about country music and uh, sort of rural sort of things. Uh, that leads us to our next book, a Saskatchewan book, but a book of photography. Tell us about Forgotten, it's called Forgotten Saskatchewan. That's right, by Chris Attrell. So he's not from Saskatchewan originally, but he fell so in love with Saskatchewan and cruising Saskatchewan roads and taking photographs of long forgotten towns and buildings and rusted out cars that he now lives in Shaunavan and has done for many years. Uh, he shares his work through Instagram, and this is a book basically of just absolutely lovely, evocative images of a province, I think, we all see and drive by on the highway, but he's paused to take a look and bring those images to spend a little time on. They're so imaginative. There's something about the storytelling. Who lived there? Who was this once upon a time? Who cared for this house and what happened to them? You know what? I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, being from a small town in Saskatchewan, uh, these these I, haunting is maybe maybe too much. Some of them are, but they're not all haunting photographs. But they certainly uh, stir some emotions about that which has passed and sort of where we are in rural Saskatchewan. And so, and so many small towns continue to get smaller, and with that, things become uh, dilapidated, antiquated, and it's uh, it's an interesting look at, as you say. Uh, a bygone era and what continues to sort of happen in rural areas. So it's it's really quite an amazing uh, collection of photographs. He uses a line from Lucy Maud Montgomery at the beginning, nothing is ever really lost to us as long as we remember it. And I feel like that's partly what the book is about too, is, is even if imaginatively we've not visited the place, we can, we can connect with it. All right, well, let's connect with some Canadian writer, a, a local writer. This is something we do uh, every time on Ali's Book Club. Tell us a little bit about Birdsong. 
So Julie Flett is not our local author. That was the that was the Sean Ravone author. This is our children's author this ah. month. And we're adding in because next month is I Read Canadian, which is a nationwide focus on Canadian children's literature because we have so many extraordinary authors here in Canada creating such beautiful work. We're asking Canadians to go out and read it and buy it and connect with it. So Julie Flett is Cree Métis, and this is her book, Birdsong, which is about a girl who moves house and creates art and connects with an older lady who lives in the house near her new home. So it sounds like it hasn't got much of a story, and yet somehow with the beautiful illustrations and the emotional resonance of the book, Julie Flett has created a really extraordinary, different, beautiful picture book. It won the TD Canadian Children's Book of the Year um, at the end of last year, which somehow I missed. I don't know how I missed that, but I guess maybe the pandemic. <laughs> maybe. Um, Really glad that I Read Canadian nudged me in the direction of heading over to McNally's and to Turning the Tide to to look for uh, some more Canadian children's books and to be able to bring this one to you. Because really, for anyone who has children in their lives, just the artistic capacity of Julie Follett to be able to write and draw like this makes any kid, I think, and me want to create. All right. Well, we're just out of time, but next month we will be diving deep into uh, I Read Canadian and uh, we're looking forward to that conversation. I always look forward to these. So thank you so much as always and look forward to some terrific books next month as well as the ones you suggested today. Thanks, Jeff.